So hello, happy Friday everyone. So here we are continuing with the barn build and uh, I'll just explain a few things what, um, what I've done and what you need to do if you want to start a building process on any little project you're doing. So here we go, I've got the four corner posts in which I've uh, measured exactly um, and I've put a piece of rope around to give me a visual sort of um, idea of, of how big this thing is going to be. So the actual barn is, is 5 metres by 5 metres, so that's this here. And then the this piece from here onwards is going to be just the carport. So we've actually put the tractor inside the barn where it's going to be stored. Yeah, and just to get some idea of where it's going to sit, you know. So there's obviously the front doors, the tractor's right there. And again, the back doors will be where this post is here. So yeah, it's surprising how big a little tractor is, you know. Uh, and then we've got room for the trailer, which is there, and the other implements. Probably this side and beside it, and then this side over here. We'll have room for the olive nets, or the wine making equipment, and, and things like that, you know. The... Uh, yeah, the olive shaker, all the stuff that, that you need for that. So yeah, there we go. So that's basically it set out. And now all we've got to do is, for the barn, dig the foundations. You know, five metres by five by five. We've got the doors. There you go, so the tractor will be sort of in the middle. The trailer and implements here. And uh, the olive stuff and everything over that side. And then just a carport like we have very simple just a flat roof over the top on that end to keep the sun off the cars job done okay so here goes the start of taking the roof off the existing uh, carport so we can get the four posts off and then um, redig holes and put the post in the new position So I have here different sized bits. I'll put one I think I'm definitely going to need in my pocket. Just that one. And we'll see about the rest. Thank you. 
So there we go. Roof off. Uh, all those sheets I'm going to use for shading up in the goat paddock, I think. All we got to do now is unbolt the cross pieces from the main uprights and then dig out the main uprights so we can move them, just moving them over there. That's really good. And it's warm, so we're having a break. Okay. Stay from that post, yeah? yeah Trusty old Hilti uh, SD22, one of the best. Shameless plug. Ten years old, still going strong. Hang on, sir. So I've had to get the big boys involved. This is the um, Milwaukee 
AWA AVS 750, yeah. Uh, it's a big breaker which just come back off loan. Uh, lent it to Steve and Natalia at Portuguese Kinta Garden Culinaria. Um, so, a proper big tool for a big man's job. So what I'm going to try and do is split the concrete either side of this post. Hopefully then we'll be able to leave the concrete in the ground and pull the post out. One down. Three to go. So there we go, that's all the four posts out now, um, even even the one that we snapped off, Ewan managed to get the bottom piece out while I was looking for a shovel, so well done Ewan. <coughs> yeah, so what we've got to do now is where these posts you see are, is dig four holes and re-erect it. And. <laughs> so basically, or typically I should say, where we're digging a hole, the centre of this hole needs to be where the post goes and we've discovered a big huge lump of granite. So what I might do is break the corner of this off so the post fits nicely in against it and I can fix the post to the granite and then concrete the rest in. Should be fun. Here we go, we've dug the hole, it's all in line. Um, put a couple of big rocks in there just to hold this roughly in place. Now Ewan's going to tip some concrete in. And this is just sand and cement, but very coarse sand. We've left out the aggregate in this first bit because I want it to go all around the pipe, go around the post, I should say. So I'll poke that in there with a bit of steel on it. A bit of wood even. A bit dry, but there we go. Yeah, this is Should have had wetter concrete really good. This consolidates it, gets all the air out of it.
the line. Very yeah, good for level. As long as I don't have too strong a wind, it'll be fine. Okay, I'm down here in the uh, slightly overgrown fruit part of the garden because these little beauties here are ready to be picked. We have a couple of small bushes, but I have a nice little selection of the red gooseberries here ready to go. So what I shall do, I shall give these a little pick and uh, yeah, I'll show you what I'm going to do with them in a moment. Well, in a bit anyway. with gooseberries because you're forgetting about the big prickles in there. But these are going to be absolutely lovely. <laughs> okay, so that's one little goosegog bush picked. That's what I have so far, so I'm just going to come over and do the other one. And uh, yeah, then we'll take this all up to the kitchen. So we've only got two bushes, but uh, they've done really well. This is the first year I've actually harvested any, and as you can see, they look really good. I'm really, really pleased. So. Uh, Hopefully I can do wonders with these little guys. Okay, gooseberry bushes all picked. So I have this little amount in my truck at the moment. So hopefully, look at these little beauties. So hopefully I can uh, go and create something with these. So uh, let's see. Okay, back into the kitchen now and it's much cooler in here. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna take our little gooseberries. a quick wash. I've taken off the little sort of fluffy ends of them, just topped and tailed them. I've actually got 750 grams just over um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in the saucepan. There's a little bit of water in this saucepan. I'm adding 8 teaspoons or tablespoons I should say of sugar with this. So, And then we're going to Three, but count three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Just turn that on a moment. And we're just going to let this jangle down until the gooseberries themselves start to, they, they should start to burst a little bit and then we'll, we'll give them the squish. Now I don't need all of this lot for the recipe that I'm going to be doing, but what I will do, what I don't use, I'm going to save because it will be a really good, it means that I can do this again later on. I only need about a third of this amount. So for, for what I'm doing, 
is 250 grams of gooseberries with two to three tablespoons of sugar, obviously to taste. I mean, I like things a little bit tartar anyway. So we're just gonna let that jowdle down. Okay, the gooseberries are now nice and pulpy, as we'll say. So I'm just going to take them off the heat and give them a good squidge. Now this I'm going to transfer into this bowl here and then I'm going to let that cool down for a little bit and then we're going to put it in the fridge. So uh, just let me, oh, look at that, it's all nice and And then we put this into another bowl, carefully because it's very hot. Should get a nice face full of steam then. <laughs> so I shall leave this to one side. I'll put a cover over it. Um, we have some of these mesh covers, they're really good especially this time of year. So like I said, I'll put this on a flat surface and put one of these over the top. Keeps any little bugs and flies out. So give that a chance to cool down and then I'll pop it into the fridge. So I've just come back from uh, Ewan and Carissa's, the Foggies, and uh, Anne's just been working wonders in the kitchen and picking some fruit and things. And she's gonna show you now, reveal what she's made. Yeah. So here we go. What have you done? Made some gooseberry mush. Gooseberry mush, yeah, yeah, I saw you do that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do actually with part of that is to make a gooseberry fool. <laughs> gooseberry fool. Gooseberry fool. <laughs> um, some yogurt. Now, the quantities would call for 200 millilitres of cream, 200 millilitres of, I'm using Greek yogurt which is a better one to do. Um, two or three ta uh, teaspoon, tablespoons, dessert spoons, these spoons, of icing sugar Ooh. and some vanilla extract. Okay. Now that quantity would m make enough really for four, five, maybe six people at a push. As there is actually only the two of us, even though a certain person <sighs> to say? is a pig. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a little bit less quantities. So, all I'm doing, I'm going to put in a sort of a good couple, I think four good dollops of Greek yogurt. I'm then going to put in, oh, this stuff is, always goes everywhere. scoop of icing sugar and a little bit of our vanilla extract. This is stuff that we've done with Aguadent and vanilla pods so it's really strong. strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to mix that together. I'm going to add some cream. I'm only going to add about half the thing. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's separated. <laughs> just gonna get all the solids have floated. Oh, floated. Oh. Made butter. That's better. So I'm going to put in some cream. About half the pot. And then I'm going to whisk this together. Right, so that's thickened up, so we've got little soft peaks forming. I'm now just going to add some of this. So this is really like, uh, almost like a coolie, I suppose you could say, because I'm going to save 
the rest I might freeze it um, and it can be used for lots of things gooseberry wise you can head. only eat so much gooseberry fool <laughs> How gooseberry do you want your fool? I quite gooseberry, I quite like it. Especially the red ones, they're really nice. Yeah, I know, this is a lovely colour, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, I think that'll do. That's it, just for luck. Oh, just for luck. So all I'm going to do now is get a couple of bowls and put this into two bowls. All right, so we can eat that straight away? Yep. But if you chilled it, it would obviously thicken, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Exactly. But, cool. But I want to eat it now. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks lovely. In fact. Oh, it's horrible. You hate okay. it. So there you go, guys. Gooseberry full. Really easy to do. And let's say we're just we're so lucky that our gooseberries have done something this year. So, brilliant. So that's it for this Friday, guys. <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, thanks to Ewan for the help with the with the posts yep. and taking the rest of it down. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it, um, and we'll see you next Friday. Yes. Yeah, there's not one on Tuesday. No. So thanks for thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for ringing that little notification Ding. bell. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. So here I am, I've arrived at uh, the Foggies, Frankie Off Grid, and um, if you want to see what I'm doing here, hello Diogo, uh, tune into their channel. So as you can see the chickens are also enjoying the sun at the moment, it's Gladys our new rooster, hello Gladys.